Today we have Meta Parlikar, the CTO and co-founder of Casper Labs. Meta, so excited to have you here. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here as well. So Meta, where are you right now in this world? Right now I am in Puerto Rico. I'm in Dorado, Puerto Rico. Wow, you're with all the crypto people that are moving to Puerto Rico. So Meta, let's talk about your life first. I want to find out, how did you get into crypto? Oh gosh, well, that's a great story. So a friend of mine uh, needed leadership for an open source uh, crypto project. And I'm known amongst my you know, colleagues for being an excellent engineering leader. And so when he needed leadership to help manage this team of developers, he reached out to me. And that was in 2017 during the ICO boom. And I managed that project you know, for about 13 months and got that project all the way up to testnet and they experienced a governance failure. And the, uh, my co-founders actually in Casper Labs were involved in that project and they saw the work that I did and then we decided to co-found Casper Labs in 2018. And the rest is history. Wow, I mean, literally one of the first, you know, protocols. And what's exciting about it is, you know, that there's not that many women co-founders. And so we're, Meta, wait, when you first like got into like college and were you like, I want to be an engineer? Do you want to get into development? Like what brought you to get into this field? So this is a really interesting story. My dad um, is the one that's credited with me getting into technology. And when I was very, very young, he was always really an advanced thinker in terms of, in terms of technology. He was ripping MP3s when he was in his 80s. Um, and he, uh, actually in his seventies. So he in introduced me to technology in the early eighties and we were building computers in our basement. Um, in the early eighties, he had me, you know, writing bash scripts with MS DOS back then. He had a, he had a, 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 pro a plotter actually that, you know, he was building, he was, a, he was an engineer and, um, but I wound up going to school for pre-med at the time. I really wasn't really into technology at the time. I did have a PC on my desk. I was the only one in my college that had a computer in my dorm room, uh, only kid in, in high school that had a PC and I've been using word processing, you know, technologies since the early eighties and spreadsheets shortly after that. And so it kind of stepped away from it. And then I came back to it um, in the dawn of the internet around in 1995, you know, as we started seeing dial up and then went back to school and actually got formally trained um, as a software engineer and then pivoted directly into software engineering. And uh, that's when, you know, the web 1.0 was around. So I went into uh, that technology. I did some work for learning educational software as a, as a developer and then pivoted into SaaS and worked for mp3.com. And that was actually one of the first, I don't, it's not well known, uh, first web 2.0 companies. And when you talk about web 2.0, mp3.com right. actually had dynamic web pages back then. It was really like a YouTube uh, for music and learned just a ton about the space and was really fortunate to have been on the cutting edge and then went into other cutting edge technologies after that. You know, I proceeded to go into early days uh, web analytics uh, for a large analytics company and I was with them until they were acquired by Adobe and then also went to go work for a fintech company, uh, Avalara and sales tax. So I learned a lot about sales tax, uh, fintech and compliance and was a director of engineering and an engineering leader through all of this, right? Since 1999, I've been leading teams and then, yeah, then fell into blockchain. So kind of found my way back to technology. Um, didn't really realize I was an outlier until much later in life. And that, I, you know, I just knew the way these things worked because I'd been working with them for so long. And I was building tech for so long and, and coding for so long that it was just a natural, natural thing that kind of found me, actually. So when you were, where did you grow up? I grew up in Windsor, Ontario in Canada. So I'm still a Canadian. Uh, moved to the United States in 1991 when I met my husband and lived in San Diego for 30 years and then just recently relocated to Puerto Rico. And so, you know, in college, were you like one of a few women in your class that were studying engineering? So funnily enough, when I went to college, I went to college for a bachelor's in biology. When I went back to computer information systems, yes, absolutely. I was one of the only women in my class um, when I worked in software engineering, even in the you know early, mid, mid to late 90s, only woman. Uh, worked in a construction company, did IT support, only woman. You see the theme, there's only woman, yeah. So wait, Meta, so like how many people were in your class where you were the only woman? It was, so I did go to a trade school, it was a pretty small class, about 40, 50 people. It wasn't a huge class, but I was the only woman. 
Um, at wow. mp3.com, I was the only female director of engineering. And um, I'm sorry, I had one counterparty, uh, one party that was also a female director of engineering at mp3.com. But we had 175 engineers, very, very few women. Um, at uh, Omniture, only female leader. Avalara, only female leader, right? And it's, it's yeah, so I'm, I'm used to being the only female, definitely the only female leader for sure. And quite often the only female at all in engineering. And what do you see as one can do to support more girls and more women to get into engineering? Gosh, I would say do what my dad did, right? Like my dad was a pioneer in that way. He put me in front of a computer despite my protests. I was grumpy about it at the time, but he made sure that I understood how technology works and he exposed me to that, right? And so people that I know, uh, men in the engineering field, in the technology field, are actively exposing their daughters, their nieces, their granddaughters to engineering principles, to technology, to algorithms at a young age. Like we're talking, you know, six, seven, eight years of age, they're putting them in front of a PC. And I um, think that's really, that's really, really important that we do that, right? Um, obviously supporting women by, through mentorship. So I mentor a lot of women, young women that want to get into technology. I feel that mentoring and having a mentor is really, really important um, to help us get out of our own way sometimes. Um, it's great because, you know, there are a lot of women issues that we have. They're very, they are gender specific. Um, working in a very male dominated field like engineering, you know, you have to, you don't ever want to give up your femininity, but you have to find your voice. And this is something that I tell a lot of the women that I mentor is that really finding your voice is, is super, super important. Um, and having, you know, we discount ourselves. We're always our own worst critic. I feel like this is like a universal truth to all the women that I speak with, you know, is that we tend to be harder on ourselves than anybody else's. And we have to, we have to work really hard. We'll have to work harder than men, right? I'm a minority woman. My father was, you know, a minority in Canada and the United States in the sixties and we had to struggle really hard, you know, as, as a community, you know, being Asian Indian, um, we had to struggle really hard, particularly in Canada. In those days and age, you know, uh, Indians were really, they suffered a lot of racial discrimination. And I think it's natural, that, you know, that women will have to work twice as hard as men in, in, but I think we're up for it. Like, I think we actually are, you know, I think men are the fair sex. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. <laughs> I, wanna, I did it. I said it. I went ahead and said it. Um, but I think we're tough. I think we're very resilient um, as a gender. And so I've, I, I've not seen women that are afraid to work hard, right? Um, and I think we're better for it. I think we're stronger for it when we have to work hard. I have had to work really hard. I've had, but I, a lot of the work was internal too, around really finding my voice. That was really the challenge for me. So, I mean, going back to your father, I mean, I think it's also important for people to realize that there's a lot of opportunities for girls to learn, rather whether you have a, a parent that can teach you, there's girls who code in a lot of different um, groups around the country and the world. Very different world now we live in, right? Very different world. Completely different world than in the 70s, right? In the 80s, completely different world. All that information is just available to you. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.